Hello, in this video, we will take a look at what is the least privilege permission or role in Azure AD that an app needs to be able to create service principles from multi-tenant application registrations from another tenant. The key part here is another. And by least privilege, we mean we don't want to give it full control over our directory, but we only want it to be able to create those service principles. An example scenario for this requirement could be a continuous integration testing automation workload that runs and needs to be able to create service principles from an Azure, Azure AD tenant programmatically. But we don't want this workload to, do, to be able to do anything else. So what I did is I created a multi-tenant app registration in my uh, work tenant, right? So it will have this app ID and it's set up to be multi-tenant. This is what we will want to create a service principle for, but in my Arsene Vlad MSDN Azure Active Directory. So obviously a user like myself who is logged in right now, I can go and create this um, uh, consent to that application and it will create a service principle here. But what if I needed to do this via an identity, an app identity? So let, let's go over a few steps uh, of how uh, we will do it. So what we will do first is we will create um, our app identity to which we will be granting the permission. So in my tenant, I'll just do this uh, in the portal instead of programmatically. I'll create a new registration. I'll call it AV app one. It will be single tenant because it is not the one that's actually multi-tenant, it's the one that will be creating the multi-tenant permission. Great. I'll generate a secret for this identity that we will record for later use. Okay. And I will delete this so the secret is okay if it's staying here. And now that we have the secret and the application ID, uh, what do we need to make it possible with this identity to create the service principle? Let's first try doing that uh, by just granting it a permission that may seem like it's enough. So let's go here and say, hey, let's give it application dot uh, read write owned by permission, right? Which is should be possible for it to create uh, service principles. And we'll click this grant consent to give it the permission to this app. So now that we have it in the cloud shell right here, I'll log out and I will log in using this. And to log in this, uh, using this identity, I have this, you know, CLI command. So let's try and see what happens. So we're going to log in using this identity. It, we told it we don't want, uh, we don't need subscriptions. There are no subscriptions to this identity. So we are logged in right now, right? And the next step is we want to be able to create uh, the actual application registration. So to do that in our experiment, we will make a call, create service principle from a multi-tenant application registration. We'll use this ID, and this is the ID that corresponds to this multi-tenant application in a separate um, directory. And we will, it will be just a post request like this, okay? So let's grab this ID and put the value right here, okay? And if we take this command and run this from the cloud shell where we were just logged in, we should see it either working or failing. So we basically say, hey, create a service principle, but from an identity in another tenant. And we can see that it failed. And it says when using this permission, the backing application of the service principle being created must be in the local tenant. So that confirms that we cannot use just the application read write by owner permission. We need more permissions than that. So what permissions do we need? So if we look at the, um, currently in July, 2022, if we look at the document for the create service principles, the document here describes the permissions, right? It talks about what is needed to create service principle. And usually owned by is enough. 
But here in this note right now, it says if the backing application registered another tenant, the calling app must be assigned cloud application administrator or application administrator roles. And these are pretty uh, powerful roles because that means that it create, delete service principles. And I, in my requirements, need it only to be able to create the service principles, but not delete them, for example, or not even read them. So if this is the correct documentation, then there would be nothing else we can do. However, there is also an issue in GitHub that's currently open. And in this issue in GitHub, there is a more detailed description from the identity team uh, of what are the permissions. So it's uh, for creating in the same tenant or across tenants. So if we look at this section of the documentation, then we see what the document uh, the document says this correctly, but it's also a custom directory role with this permission may be enough for the multi-tenant app registered in the tenant. So that's what we are going to do. We're going to create a custom directory role with this permission, and we'll try that. To try that, though, we will um, need to make sure that we have Azure AD Premium P1 or P2 licenses because creation of custom roles, as is described in the documentation, requires these licenses and this document walks through how to create it in a portal and we can also create it um, using uh, the CLI. So I have uh, some commands here to create the custom role. So to create the custom role, we can either follow the portal or we can create it by making a call to this uh, REST API endpoint the graph endpoint, role definition, and AD custom role creator. And basically in, the, in that file is just this permission. So, so I'm currently logged in into the Azure CLI using my, you know, a, a global admin identity. And we are going to create this um, role definition. And once we created the role definition, we can find it in the directory right here. So under role definitions, we sort it based on custom. We should be able to see it. Service principle created from another tenant. That's the role we just defined. And if we look at its description, it has this one um, service principal permission. And we could have obviously done it right here by changing the permissions in the portal. Okay. So right now this um, uh, permission is created. And then with, what we can do is we will need to assign uh, this role, this custom role to an identity. So let's create a brand new identity. So we're going to create a brand new identity. We created app one didn't work, we're gonna create app two, and we're going to make sure that this new app um, gets the permission. So we're gonna just generate the secret that we will need for login. Okay, we'll grab the secret for later. And we'll also grab the client ID and just store it here so that we can log in as that identity soon. Okay, and then what we will also do is we can either use a, a role assignment command with the principal ID of our service principal and the role definition we just created, which is right here, or we can do it in a portal. So let's do it right here in the CLI. So we're going to say we want our role definition ID to be this ID that came back to us when we created the role. We want it at the scope of the slash. Uh, meaning at the directory scope, and we want our principal ID to be the service principal we just created before. So the service principal we just created before in the portal, let's go grab its um, ID. So it's basically the subject ID for the service principal. So let's see if this command works to do the assignment and we'll check the assignment in the portal as well. So the assignment worked 
And if we come back to the portal and we look at the roles here, and we search for that role we just defined, this is the one, we should be able to see the assignments. It may take a few seconds for the cache to refresh, and we can see the uh, assignment to our identity is created. And the permission, again, is service principles create. So if we go back here, we remember that previously, when we tried with the previous identity, it failed with this error. But now uh, we create, and this identity did not have that special custom permission. So let's create uh, or let's log in using the new identity. So that one will be this login command. So easy log out first. And let's log in using the identity that has have had the permission. And then we're going to do the post again. So what this command is saying is create service principle from this identity, uh, app ID, which is in another tenant. And previously it failed. Let's see if it works. We can see that it did work right now. The command came back successfully. And we have our service principle ID right here. So now let's see, can we actually read that service principle back, right? So just created the service principle, try reading it back. So we're going to use this command, for instance, to see if we can read the service principle that we just created. So we come back to the same session, and we run this command. And we see that it says authorization insufficient privileges to complete the operation. And the reason this happens is because we gave the service principle permission to create other service principles from other tenants, but it cannot read them at all, right? So if we wanted to read them, what we could do is we could provide application read all permission or Microsoft Directory Service Principle allow all properties read permission. This would enable our workload to read properties of all service principles in the, in the Azure Active Directory. However, not when we make these changes, it doesn't apply right away. It may take you know, some time to apply. So we can do this quick experiment. Uh, we can go in and actually create, add this permission right here. So under permissions, service principles, all properties read right there. Next update. And when we do this, even if we log out, and then re-log in using the identity we just created, it may still, oh, in this case, the permission was um, updated very quickly. So now it can read again, right? So it was able to read the service principle create. Let's remove the, this, uh, this property. Sometimes it does take longer. So that's what I wanted to show, but let's see if removal will automatically make it not okay. So let's log out and log back in. And then we'll read it again and it cannot read again. So it looks like with modifying the permission, it's fast, but if you notice that it's taking longer, uh, it's sometimes easier during experimentation and testing to create another identity instead and use that one instead of waiting for the old one to to update itself. So that's basically what I sometimes end up doing if you if we adding the permissions here. But that's the that's the example of the least privileged way to create a service principle from another tenant. And the documentation that's currently um, not mentioning this will get updated soon to include uh, this explanation that service principle create permission is what's needed. Uh, there will be, th this uh, video will link to a 
GitHub repository in which these steps and commands will be outlined so that uh, you can repeat them on your end. After we are done with experiments, don't forget uh, to delete uh, these um, resources that we created. So for example, the deletion of the service uh, of the custom role and the actual um, identities that were created here need to be need to be done. And the final thing I wanted to show what happens if we try to create a service principle multi-tenant one again for the same thing we already created, right? So it's the same application ID that already exists. Notice what will happen. It will say the service principle cannot be created because the service principle is already in use. So where is it in use? How would you find it? As an example, just take the app ID, search our tenant. We can find under enterprise applications. This is the tenant. We can get rid of it as an example. Just it's gone now. And then we can re try to creating it again and it will work this time and again if we try to create it a second time it will not and if we use an invalid id it will tell us that the app id is invalid right so that's how we can see that multi-tenant service principle creation works uh, with the permissions we granted thank you very much uh, for watching uh, and don't forget to reference the github repo with more uh, commands in there thanks a lot